What's up guys, this is Mike Loris and I am back with game number two between Evil Geniuses and Pot and Bottom. This is from the Absolute Arena, King of the Hill. As you can see on the top right here, actually. It wasn't in the last game, this thing on the top, but uh, Evil Geniuses did get their uh, get their victory. And they also, with that victory, got their uh, clan tag or whatever this is called. Up. Uh, we actually are seeing some picks. I usually skip the bands because it's usually pretty lackluster. This time is not really an exception. Broodmother, Rubik, and Lashrak are very often seen in that band pool, and if they get through, they're usually picked, as we saw in last game where all those three heroes were picked. Evil Genius is banning out the Rubik as well as the Broodmother. Uh, sneaking wasn't really that a big uh, issue when PB picked up the Rubik, and Evil Geniuses used the Broodmother pretty well themselves. PB banning out the Lashrak, a very common ban, but there's that's also amplified by the fact that Universe was so effective with that Lashrak in the middle of every fight with those Pulse Nova pulses, I guess. <laughs> Plus the Edict doing a ton of damage, Split Earth as well to follow up on that. Evil Geniuses, gonna pick up Lone Druid and Enigma, so right off the bat we do see that Lone Druid first pick, uh, this time by the other team. Still on the Dire side, but uh, Lone Druid switching sides a little bit. Enigma is also the pickup for Evil Geniuses. It will give them an easy jungle and probably set up for something like a tri-lane-ish situation for their top lane, with Enigma dipping in to push or whenever he wants to, set up with the Venomans or something like that. Bottom bottom, picked up the Darkseer who managed to get through this draft, and Lycan is actually in this draft too, he's available, so <laughs> how often do you see Lycan throw? Uh, Brewmaster is kind of like the odd one out, Rubik too. As far as the bands goes, the bands go. So, uh, Lycan is an option for PB. The thing is with Lycan, I mean, he's very strong, I agree. Like, no one's going to tell you that he's a bad hero, but I feel like whenever he's picked up, he's shut down because the teams know how to play against him. And although Lycan can get back up really quickly, you just have to, you know, find a couple of free minutes in the jungle, and then bam, you have like a million gold. Uh, it's the teams usually are pretty diligent about keeping that Lycan down, making sure that even when he has a whole bunch of gold and a whole bunch of items, he's not really that a huge threat. So, Lycan is still usually first ban material. Although this time is one of the rare occasions that we are not seeing that. Uh, Naga Siren still sitting up there as solid, solid first ban material. You don't want to be playing against Naga Siren because of that setup. With any big team ultimate, or just with any ordinary team, just a huge showstopper. It's very hard to control, and she just offers 100% pure control over every single fight, every single gank, and it's just a ridiculous hero to have. PB gonna get Invoker as well as a Tidehunter. Invoker, from the looks of it, is going to be soloing a lane. Darkseer most likely gonna be soloing a long lane as well. PB with that Tidehunter. Could set up for a duel or tri lane ish kind of thing. Uh, Chen and Chantress still in the pool, so PB might want to pick those up, or you know, at least one of them. That will give them the opportunity to lane someone who is a little Five bit like more right click oriented, a little more farm oriented, with that Tide Hunter and with the Chen exactly. slash Enchantress in that bot lane. Then have the very solid uh, defensive tri lane. A little bit of killing power mixed in there as well, and EG's uh, solo hero probably down there is going to have to deal with that. It could be very difficult. EG is actually going to pick up the Lycanthrope. So they do have the Lone Druid and Lycanthrope and Enigma, which is a lot of pushing power. I feel like we're seeing the exact opposite of last game. I mean, I mean like, kind of the same thing, but the team's just switched. But Lycan actually being picked third, so that's something you won't see every day. Hopefully Lycan kind of phases out, because I don't really like watching Lycan. He's kind of boring. But anyway, he's picked up, and usually Lycan not in the jungle for these types of games. And I feel like Enigma is a comparable jungle as far as the uh, as far as the speeds go. Uh, Enigma could also do a little more in ganking, and Lycan could survive in the lanes, lasted very well in the lanes as well. So... We might see a laning Lycan with the jungle enigma, it might be the other way around, evil geniuses. Uh, either way, they decide to run it, they are going to have someone in that jungle position, which is going to be a question of who. And PB 
banning out the Keeper of the Light. Now, Keeper of the Light has been seeing a remarkable amount of play. Like, I'm constantly surprised whenever I see a ban or pick on Keeper of the Light, simply because in Dota 1, I would never see him at all. Uh, granted, I wasn't the most adamant follower of Dota 1, of Dota 1 so I am not the most knowledgeable as far as how the game is played over there, but... I mean, like, it makes sense. He's has a huge amount of counter-pushing. The only thing is... Hot and bottom looks like they want to be the ones counter pushing. Like against a lone druid, enigma, and lichen, you kind of want to have something that can just wipe out all the creep waves, all the eidolons, maybe even catch the wolves in there as well. And Keeper of Light is one of the best heroes to do that, so they're not going to have the opportunity to do that, but they also don't want evil geniuses to have that as uh, for their sieging. Send eidolons in, send constant illuminate blasts in, that could be such a pain in the ass. Evil Geniuses is going to ban out that Morphling, so PB is going to be restricted as far as that uh, tri-lane that, as I spoke, that I spoke about before. Of course, they still have plenty of options there. Morphling is, I don't want to say the best, but it's definitely the most popular as far as those types of lanes go, when you have one carry, a support, and then a jungler in kind of a pseudo-dual tri-jungle lane situation, whatever you want to call it. Beastmaster is going to be the ban out as well for pot and bottom. Eliminating that easy, easy bot lane for evil geniuses. Or I mean, like, not easy. There's no such thing as easy hard lanes. But eliminating the pull possibility and, and eliminating the chances of anyone actually surviving and thriving on that bot lane. And evil, evil geniuses banning out the DK, who's also a very good tri lane hero because of that dragon tail. Get that dragon tail, you could land whatever skill shot or AoE nuke you really want. And then everything just sets up very well. And DK, I'm, I'm like, I love DK. He's just so tanky, and he ends up doing so much damage if you get him to level 16. I'm really disappointed that we don't see more of him, but seeing him in the ban pool, that's a very respectable ban in my opinion. And Pot and Bottom is actually going to pick up Lina. Lina's is a support hero that has been seeing quite a lot more play. Uh, quite a lot, yeah. I mean, like... She's 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 an excellent support hero. She's, in my opinion, not up to the caliber of Venomancer or Shadow Demon or Rubik. But she, the what she offers to the team is a lot more offensive. That Laguna Blade... Whew, if you never got hit by a Laguna Blade, then go play more Dota because that Laguna Blade hurts. Uh, Evil Geniuses is pretty tanky. Enigma will uh, has the Five tendency of going for a mech slash pipe, so... He might be... Uh, able to withstand that. Lycan and Lone Druid, also pretty bulky heroes. So, uh, either way, Lina will offer a support, a very heavy amount of support, with that Tidehunter on the bot lane. Let's see if. I want to see. Who are you going to lane with that pot and bottom? The Darkseer is most likely going to go in the hard lane. That's like the role of Darkseer almost every single game. And this is the question of who they want to pick up for the last hero with Invoker soloing mid. Evil Geniuses. Evil Geniuses kind of support light. Wouldn't be surprised to see a Venomancer pick, a Shadow Demon pick, a Crystal Maiden pick, uh, any sort of support hero. They need someone to buy the wards. They need someone to do that. And then by usually you want to have a couple more items. You want him to have the mech. You want to have the or uh, mech or pipe, Blink Dagger, BKB, all that good stuff. Venomancer is going to be the support pick for Evil Geniuses, which will increase their pushing power even more. Uh, Lina for bottom bottom actually a very good pick in the sense that she has a lot of crowd clearing abilities, a LSA and Dragon Slave. Will clear off Eidolons, will clear off creep waves pretty well. Not to mention any additional spells coming out from any of bottom bottom's other heroes. Darkseer should have a pretty easy time in the hard lane though. Because Evil Genius is probably remaining. looking to lane either the Lone Druid up with him. Or that Lycanthrope. And either way, I um, mean, like, the Lone Druid's gonna have to be careful. He's gonna have to dance around those. Ooh, hello. He's gonna have to dance around those Ion Shells and Lycanthrope. If he wants to get a creep kill, he's gonna take a little bit of damage from that Ion Shell. PB gonna get a Pugna. Now, that's definitely not what I was expecting at all. Pugna, of course, will have a ton of counter pushing with that Nether Blast. But, I don't know. The Nether Ward, not really a huge deal for. E for EG. Venomancer is very susceptible to it. Enigma is decently susceptible Ten to it as well. But uh, they're not really huge issues in team fights. Like Lycan and Lone Druid do not care about your Nether Ward at all. And they could easily send some wolves or the bear to get rid of that uh, Nether Ward. Disruptor. Disruptor. Ooh, that's a 
that's a fun support. Also a very good support hero. Uh, really disappointing he's not seeing more play because Glimpse is just so versatile. But PB, I don't know. I feel like they don't really know where they're going with this lineup. I definitely would not have picked, a, picked up a Pugna because uh, Pugna is just so squishy. If he gets one Entangle, if he gets one Stun, if Venomancer Gale uh, gets caught in the kinetic field, Pugna is pretty much screwed. Now, if Pugna is the one being the aggressor, if he's the one actually uh, putting people ethereal and setting up for Lina, then, well, that's just dandy. You're going to get a kill pretty much all the time, but how often does that actually happen? Let's go over who's playing what. Demon going to be playing the like and throw up with Fear on that lone druid. Bulba playing the Disruptor with Universe on the Enigma. I love it when you pause, Enigma just blinks. And you never really see that, because usually there's, like, what, lens flares on his eyes? I guess that's what they're called. I mean, I was just, he's just chilling. He's just an ordinary guy. He's just uh, blinking and stuff. And Michael Kesha Graham, that is, once again, IX Mike from Team Complexity, picking up that support hero. On the PB side, we have Sneaking on the Darks here. Owie 2000, usually the hard carry player, getting going to be picking up the pug now this game. So uh, he's looking to get some farm, get some items, get some bulk early on. Way Too Sexy is going to be playing the Tidehunter. Fogged, what is going on? Fogged is going to play the Tidehunter, uh, the Invoker, who once again is bald and has the weird cloak thing going on. And Tides of Time, the last hero on PB, the Lina, going to be playing the support hero. All of PB already looking... <laughs> What is going on? My god. No, I'm not going to wait for your phone call, Ties of Time. Come on. Oh, that's something new. Uh, Yeah, it's really cool. I actually never noticed that before. There are uh, wind timers on the top. Uh, of course, these are the kills. Just zero, zero kills. But this green thing, uh, EG is one game ahead out of this best of five. So that's pretty awesome. I never noticed that, actually. I don't. I think that's new. I want to say that's new. Uh, either way, I think PB are going to look towards a Roshan Scout with Lycanthrope as well as Lone Druid plus Phantom Answer Wards uh, and Eidolons. Actually, you could turn, you could convert your Wolves into into Eidolons. Uh, it's very likely that EG would have wanted to get a level one Roshan, but PB doing their work, doing their job, make sure that they're not caught unaware. With any weird level 1 Roshan, this wolf is probably not going to die. If it does, it'll give a little bit of gold. It will give gold to Owie. No! Oh, that was so close. <laughs> Demon knows it too. <laughs> oh, Owie's he's sad facing her. That was like this much of a difference between like, what, 30 gold? The wolf bounty is kind of normal, I think, if I remember correctly. Begins. But on the top lane, it is going to be Fear, and he's going to be up against what looks like a dual lane, sneaking as well as Tides of Time. He's definitely not going to expect that. He's not going to get everything that he thought he would out of this lane. Universe has picked up three clarities, and is he going to lane this as well? This is very interesting. Bulba solo mid. That is... This game is very silly, but I like it because it's something different. Disruptor against Invoker. Disruptor is a hero that thrives with more ex the more experience he gets. You get more points of Thunderstrike, you get a longer range of the Glimpse. Way too sexy already on the bot lane, taking quite a bit of damage. Of course, he had another blast from Aoi to keep the enemy heroes back. Picking up an idol on there. So he will get a little bit more experience as than he normally does in this uh, mid lane position. Against an Invoker, though, I'm not sure if Bulba could actually keep this up. He's dumped all of his mana out with a level 1 Thunderstrike. Level 1 spell is not necessarily the strongest. I mean, like, no shit, but... He's already out of mana. He's going to be forced to get pick up those clarities. He's going for a fast bottle, so that could help. But Fogged is... I mean, like, he's pretty much already full health with those with that level 1 point in Quas. Plus, Tangos is going for a Wex build. But that Disruptor should... I mean, like, he shouldn't lose the lane that badly. He should be okay. Uh, Universe is going to be, oh no, Ix Mike, what are you doing? Owie just needs one more blast and a couple more hits from, oh, he's actually not going to blast. The Gale slowed everyone down just enough, so the Venomancer gets to walk away. Salving and tangoing, looking to disrupt this pull once again. Definitely not the 
build I would have expected. Taz of Time is getting chased down by Demon, looking for some wolf blocking. He might get it. If he gets it, a couple more hits. Ties of Time might get chased down by these wolves. No, the wolves cancel out a salve, so that's a little bit of a victory there, but he does walk away from that alive. Uh, Demon is jungling with fear laning and sneaking Double lane cutting. Damage. Very, very interesting lanes coming out here. Ooh, I never would have predicted this. Uh, way too sexy, having some duels with IX Mike. Owie is here as well, trying to last hit under the tower. It's very difficult as any hero to do that. Pugna uh, does have some pretty good base damage for an intelligence ranged hero, so he should be okay. I mean, Enigma's just like stacking up mana. They want to put as much pressure on this tower as they possibly can. Get a couple of points in the Nether Ward for Venomancer. We're actually going to go for Poison Sting. Uh, it's a good choice against Tidehunter, and since it's mostly just uh, IX Mike versus Way Too Sexy in the jungle, if you could land some Poison Sting hits on them, it's just awesome. Random spells coming out. Decrepify on that Venomancer. Not doing anything with it, though. Sometimes you just have too much mana and you want to get rid of it, and you just have to keep the opponents on their toes. Sneaking is doing the uh, very annoying thing to Demon. You, if, if there's a light throw up on the other team, you want to be a pest as much as you can. Tide the time, however, not really able to stand up to fear on that top lane. So even though sneaking is harassing Demon quite a bit, preventing him from farming all he wants, uh, the lane's really suffering because of that. Soul Ring is flying out towards sneaking, so he is going to have unlimited mana to give generation as well. He could try to go toe to toe with Demon pretty, pretty close. Demon's taking a lot of damage, but then again, so is sneaking. Gank going out, going out onto Bulba. LSA is going to land. And the right clicks to follow. And Boker picking up a first blood onto Disruptor. Where's Disruptor going? It's one point of glimpse. Pretty standard build so far. Really can't tell what he wants to do quite yet. Now sneaking is going to get into a right click fist fight with Demon. Demon's got to be uh, sneaking, surging away. And he does have time, time to defend to help support him, I mean. And there's a salve pop off from sneaking. He's going to just keep lane cutting. But fear with, I mean, like, he has 115 damage worth of right clicks. He's going to get all the right clicks under the tower. So even though Sneaking is getting 100% of the farm, you know, so is fear. He's sitting at second place for gold per minute. And Owie, Owie's not even up there. Owie's only at 206. He's having a pretty difficult time in this lane. And Owie is the hard carry player from PB. Uh, for PB, and if he doesn't have his farm, he's going to be a very sad Owie. There you go, 30 gold, I was right. A demon isn't, uh, to be fair, a demon isn't getting anything, any, getting anything either. Disruptor is back here, gonna take down way too sexy. With those illusion runes helping him out a little bit. Three points Thunderstrike doing some pretty substantial damage as well. Glimpsing him back just for that last kill. Sneaking's gotta watch out now, he might get blocked in here. If he can get a block, there is no block. Sneaking surges himself out. Demon's gonna be unhappy about that. Level 3 versus a level 5 Dark Seer, so this Lycanthrope. As I was saying before, the teams know how to shut down Lycanthrope. Uh, the lane is suffering, though. That's something that PB can really work on as far as this game goes. But this Lycanthrope's not having a fun time at all. I'm sure Owie did not expect a dual lane from EG. I definitely wouldn't have expected that at all. But either way, I mean, like, it's, it's doing its job. So if it's a surprise for the enemy team, then it worked out. Fear level 6, though. Hasn't picked up his ultimate. I I think that's okay. Usually you want to get your ultimate earlier to get that extra health, but he knows that he's not in any danger at all. Lena's only level 3. What is level 3 Lena going to do? Look, that didn't do anything. So you could hold off, get a little bit, a couple more points of synergy up your bear a little bit. I think that will be... That's a valid thing. Valid skill build for this situation. A little bit of a tangle going down the bot lane. Way too sexy getting called out. He's gonna take a gale gush and disruption uh, onto the Venomancer. And it looks like Tidehunter is gonna get worked down by the Enigma. But the Venomancer also takes a fall to the Invoker. Invoker with a couple points of Wex plus phase boots. Gotta watch out. Universe is gonna take a decrepify to the face and a blast as well. EMP is gonna pop him. No, it's not. Universe trying to walk out of this, but his teleport is not going to be enough. Here comes Bulba, however. Static Storm, perfect placement. That's not where you want to be, Static Storm. Fogged is getting evaporated right after Owie. Going to glimpse him back into the trees and right-click him down. Bulba with that Disruptor play. 
That's as good as you could possibly get. Demon getting taken down by Darkseer as well as Lina in the meantime, but wow, that is like, that is a disruptor heaven right there. People clumped right here for a static storm. Oh my god, beautiful damage. It's just freaking amazing. So once again, uh, this game, like the last game, 4-4 four, four tie is the gold chart fixed. Yeah, everything seems to be fixed. Gold is in favor of PB. The experience is in favor of EG. Attack. That's simply how the farm is going and how the uh, kill assist distribution is going. So not really Dyer's anything huge going on there. Tides of Time has changed him down to the mid lane. The universe looks like he's going to go jungle along with Demon. So I ask Mike, I, mean, I could say he's getting some time in the lane alone. He's going to get a little bit more experience as he normally would, but if the Tidehunter goes around, then they can easily pick up this Venomancer kill. It's like top lane sneaking wants to go for fear. Tornado going to go out and not hit anything, however. And Bulba has teleported in. Level 8 Disruptor with phase boots. Sneaking's got to watch out. He can get Clems back. Kinetic Field going to wall off that exit. Sneaking is looking to go in the trees. Teleport out. Is there going to be an entangle? No, actually a glimpse can interrupt that. Sneaking, it does have Thunderstrike on him. Not going to be enough damage. Oh no, it might be enough damage with the universe coming in. With that stun, Demon clawing him to death. Where is the next player? There is Fog on the run with the phase boots. Level 3 and Wex. He should be able to be just fine. Glimpse is not in range. Uh, level 2 Glimpse only. Will not be able to hold him back. Not to mention the fact that it's not even on cooldown. So there's that also. Tide Hunter is getting some free time in the bot lane. Oh no, this Venomancer is going to take a lot of damage. Cold Snap onto him and Fog's going to work him down. There it goes. Oh, actually, Stick charges. Going to let him survive for a little bit more. Ward to block off the place and Disruptor picks up a kill on the Pugna. Fog still with the lots of mobility. Going to be stuck in the kinetic field with a Static Storm. Universe needs to get him extra stun. There's a stun on Fog taking so much damage. Thunderstrike is going to bolt him down. I think about picking up that kill. This Disruptor pick being so, so effective for EG. I did not expect him to be this effective against the Invoker. He's one level above him, about the same farm. Yeah, farm relatively close, but why don't you pick up Invo uh, Disruptor more in games? reason is because you need experience on him. You, you want a high level of glimpse because, I mean, like, attack. you want to be able to pull people back. X marks the spot style. You also want to have them in the kinetic field for as long as possible so that you can static storm them. And to do all that, you need experience that you usually don't get if you're a support hero, but if you're a solo hero sneaking, now going to take a thunder strike as well as a kinetic field, and he might be stuck a little bit. He's going to get glimpsed back and sneaking. You are so dead. Lone Druid with a big paw. Going to smack down that Lone Druid. So EG picking up a four, four kills that PB have not yet answered. Ix Mike once again getting a free lane against Owie who's trying to Oh god, the deny is too strong by Ix Mike. You get nothing, Owie. You get nothing. Bulba's here as well with the Thunderstrike. Uh, the one who's in danger actually is Universe. Smoked up to Hunter and Lena and Universe has gotta be careful. Gush going on to him. Is there gonna be an LSA? Uh cold snap, LSA, Dragon Slave, dead Enigma. Held your feet to the fire. Yeah, now they're in a little bit of an awkward position. Uh, wait till the creep wave gets here, and with uh, sneaking to help, PB could take their first tier one tower of the game. I think he's just gonna chill in the middle of the creep wave with that uh, tranquil boots up. Can't break through that. Creep wave has no chance against the darks here. Unfortunately for them, they don't have the most right click damage from their heroes. I mean, Invoker is pretty good, but everyone else, not so much. This tower is gonna live for the moment. Time of time now taking up the tower. That's not where you want to be. I really want Sneaking to tank that up because he has those Tranquil Boots. This tower is going to go down. It took them Radiant's quite a long time. ADH HP left attack. on it. And Ike Mike already setting up to prevent any further pushing. Bottom tower has fallen. So there is a tower going the way of Radiant's the Radiance, but there is fallen. also a tower going the way of the Dire. Fear and Demon picking up a tower on their own with the Wolves, with the Bear Demolish. Uh, not yet. Uh, not, uh, no points in Howl just yet. But when that comes, it's going to be very dangerous. Fog getting glimpsed back into position. He's going to take a Thunder Strike as well as a lot of damage from these summons. He's going to go down. Fear and Demon, animal buddies, farming up the jungle together as wolves and bears. I actually don't, but you get the idea. Push onto the mid lane. Tower's already at half health, but Bulba's here with the double damage. If he could catch Sneaking in the kinetic field, glimpse him back. Sneaking's going to be in for a world of hurt, but he fell back. Disruptor with double damage is something you do not want to tangle with at this stage of the game. 
who now has his glimpse maxed out. Level 10 Disruptor. Take a look at the uh, XP per minute. Disruptor, wow. Ahead by a lot. Lone Druid right behind him as well. So EG firmly in the experience advantage. A high level of caster at this point in the game is something very dangerous. A couple more points of kinetic field. And PB will not be able to run at all. They are going to be forced to stay in the Static Storm. And if they get a Black Hole Static Storm, oh my god, that will be amazing. Uh, yeah, Poison Nova too, but Poison Nova is boring. Usually Venomancer dies before any fights happen, so it's probably not going to happen. But if they get that, that's going to be so much damage. And PB, although Tidehunter, generally tanky. Darkseer, generally tanky. Uh, they're just going to melt. There's going to be another push onto the mid lane with that. Another blast. They will be able to take this tower down. Ix Mike looking for the deny. Not going to get it. Now Aoi is going to chase him back. Wolves taking a little bit of a scout out. And Lycanthrope does have Vlad's up. So he could look towards a Roshan by himself. We're actually going to find way too sexy. He wants to duel him. The Shuffer actually picking up Darkseer in the meantime. I was completely missed this. EG Universe taking a lot of damage from that Cold Snap. Going to try to juke into the trees. But Fog does have a tornado, I think. He's going to walk out and die, actually. Pugna picking up that one. It's going to be a one-for-one one there. All five heroes from PB, I think. All four, at least, on the bot lane. Uh, well, of course, Darkseer's dead. How could you have five? They're going to push down the bot lane, but their top lane is getting pushed by Fear. Orange is teleporting back. That is the Tidehunter. So, uh, the Lone Druid with a, wow, 13-minute relic. Wasn't paying attention to his farm at all, but he, that relic is very quick. Gonna could toe to toe the Tide Hunter very easily. Bulba is gonna get a lot of people in that connect field plus Static Storm. They're gonna take so much damage from this, but Bulba also taking a lot of damage as well. Here comes Ix Mike with the ultimate not hitting anyone, so yeah, Venomancer ultimate kind of underwhelming. Glimpsing someone back. It is gonna be Fog. Gonna get stunned up by the Enigma Kinetic Field once again. Vacuum then back into place for that EMP to hit. Fog launching a tornado, not gonna hit anyone. Fog did survive that glimpse, lucky for him. But there's not enough damage coming out from EG's side. Uh, Fear is still going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Tidehunter, and Demon is picking up a solo Roshan, so uh, if this tower falls, I still think this will be a wor worth it for EG, but it looks like the tower isn't even going to fall. Demon gets a free Aegis, Pink gets free farm on the top lane, almost at his Radiance, and uh, they managed to hold the tower, managed to pick up all the creeps that keep on getting funneled in, and Demon is going to continue to farm, even though he got shut down a little bit in the early stages of the game. PB kind of got complacent with their coverage of him. Managed to get his Vladimir's offering up. Another Sage Mask for some reason. I don't know what that's for. But uh, he did manage to get his important items up. And he did take a Roshan. That is going to put EG in the gold advantage at least. By Yeah, there you go. 2,500 gold. 75, 8, uh, what is that? Yeah, 2,500 experience as well. They're looking to take a tower of their own. Brown teleporting up to the top lane. That is going to be Ix Mike. Try to set up some wards to prevent this push from happening. But against a level 4 Pugna Blast. It's going to be pretty difficult. Level 4 Venomancer wards. I mean, they're pretty good at counter pushing. But I don't think it's going to be enough to completely stop that push. Just to slow it down. This push on the bot lane, however, is going to go completely through. Howl, level 1 only. But, you know, extra damage is extra damage. The tower is going to get taken down by Lycanthrope. And they can even keep going. Force and teleports back. Lots of Venomancer Wars going to try to thin out the creep wave, but the Nether Blasts will not stop. Mech, up is, Mech is up on the Pugna. No arcane, uh, one Arcane Boots. Uh, one set of Arcane Boots on the Tidehunter. The tower does go down, so that is a one-for-one one trade. Tier 1's kind of an even trade there. Now uh, EG doing the right thing. They forced teleports out, so as far as the long-term engagement goes, uh, even though both teams took a tower, EG managed to get another, what, 300, 400 something gold out of PB because of the teleport scrolls, so a little bit more of an advantage there. They, they're pushing. Uh, even though they have a Pugna on the other team, PB has a Pugna. Lycanthrope pushing with Enigma pushing, that's it's hard to top that without a less rack in the game. Five heroes from PB looking to smoke up. They are going to smoke up. Who are they going to go after, however? Demon is the only one who could actually die because he's actually pretty close, but PB aren't going to go in that direction. Tide of Time, level 7, does have a point of Laguna Blade, so they could pretty much kill whoever they find if they manage to lock him down. It is going to be Bulba. Bulba is going to take an Ice Snap, uh, Cold Snap, and he's going to get worked over, but he has an Invisibility Rune in his bottle. He's going to live, actually. Universe might be in a little bit of trouble. He's going to be the one to die instead. EMP going to go off, pop the Enigma. I think is going to be it. Bulba is very low life. I don't think EG would like to fight with this. Bear is going to go out and... Well, he's going to get 
just completely decimated. This can get resummoned right now. He's actually going to go down. So Lone Joe taking a little bit of a hit. As far as his health goes, not a big deal, however. Radiance is lost for another uh, 20 seconds. But once again, not a big deal. Bulba, I don't know how the hell you survived that spell combo, but invisibility is invisibility. Glimpsing Lena back into a static storm plus kinetic field. Tides of time is going to get demolished. You are dead, sir. Bulba picking up a near solo kill. Actually, that was a solo kill, even though Venomancer got an assist. He, Bulba did all the work. Trinidad going to go out and not hit anyone. Bulba takes a cold snap, but there's no attacks coming through. He's going to get out of there alive. This disruptor just wreaking havoc amongst PB's Radiant's side. And Demon doing a little bit of backdooring. Why the hell not? You're like a joke with him Aegis. He Radiant's could escape. I hope. If he dies because of this, I'm going to laugh. But it looks like he should be fine. He has an Aegis, and he's completely juked them all. PB is not... They don't want to put up with this shit. They're just like, fuck that. We're just going to go push. We're going to go kill Universe first, though. And uh, that's kind of what you got to do. They don't have a standard right-click carry, whereas EG has two of them. The only person that the only power that they do have is in the early mid stages of the game, but already they're falling behind. They have to take down all the rest of the towers with that Nether Blast. That's why you pick up a Pugna. That's why you actually put farm on the Pugna. But with Ix Mike setting up so many wards there, it'd be pretty difficult to take down these towers when the creep wave gets thin so fast and is waiting for an engagement right now. He's going to be Bulba's looking for a glimpse target. He doesn't have a static storm sneaking, surging up, looking for Bulba. Not going to find him, however. Bear is scouting them all out. And get, it gets instantly recalled back before any damage gets put on him. Bulba even has a blink dagger. Um, very interesting build. I would prefer for staff, but hell, build to build. Spells going off everywhere, and there we go. Initiation onto Ix Mike. He's going to take a Ravage, and he's going to go down. Static Storm is going to nail down Fog, plus a Black Hole. Lots of damage going off onto White Sexy, as well as that Invoker. Lena can take down as well. The only one to survive is Owie. He's going to get glimpsed back and just wailed on by Demon. A clean sweep for EG. Five for two. They're going to be happy with that and push down the mid lane. Fear did manage to survive. Uh, Lycan managed to survive, so the important carry heroes from EG survived. Uh, the Nimue dropped off his payload and then died. Venomancer dropped off his payload and died. So, there's two supports going down. The Disruptor fucking semi carry, killing everything because Static Storm was so much damage. Uh, I well, it didn't really combine with the Black Hole. The Black Hole was a little bit late. So, EG, you know, step up your game, EG. But nonetheless, they did manage to decimate everyone, even though Tidehunter got a decently decent sized Ravage. The initiation onto the Venomancer, not the smartest move, in my opinion. He's been taking a lot of spell damage, but he does have a heart of Tarrasque. He's going to take a tornado as well. He might go down. Bulba is here with the kinetic field, however, to try to slow them down. Demon trying to get away from this. He does still have that Aegis, and he's just going to kill the Tides of Time. Lena, with the help of Fear, Bear is going to get taken down, but it could get resummoned. It is going to get resummoned. Demon, no mana, but it doesn't matter because he has a heart of Tarrasque, and he has 51 HP regen per second, not to mention Life Steal. Bulba might be in a little bit of trouble, however. He had a Force that He'd be fine. Kinetic field to slow them down. They're all going to get trapped in there. Ix Mike is there as well with the Gale to slow him down. Owie is going to blast and try to drain out Ix Mike. It's not going to happen though. Sneaking, surging up, trying to get closer. Fog, do you have a cold snap? No, he's going to lay down EMP. Ix Mike running the wrong direction though. He's going to get taken down regardless. Starkseer with the Ion Shell picking up that kill. They're working on the bear. Bear trying to burn down the Tide Hunter. One more take. Yes, the bear does get the Tide Hunter. And Fear is close, but he's got to be careful. Who is this? Bulba is here with a couple of illusions. He's got to get out of here as well. He does have the static storm up, so if he could trap someone in there, thunderstorm on sneaking, he can do a little bit of damage to his teammates. Also, because you know, why not? Looks like that's gonna be the end of it. No glimpse into a kinetic field is Tides of Time. Tides of Time is now stuck and wailing. He's gonna take a lot of damage from this spirit bear. You don't want to fight a bear when you're a mage. That's just not a good idea. In the meantime. Demon as well as Universe picking up a tier 2 tower in the bot lane, forcing all the people from EG back. Kinetic Field not going to latch onto that Dark Seer. But Demon is going to keep going. He has an Aegis, Radiant's he has a Heart of Tarrasque, he has a uh, Shapeshift. So he could die with that Aegis without popping Shapeshift and then just run away with Shapeshift on. And he's actually going to pop a Shapeshift and run. He's got to be careful because he's got Surge back, Ion Shell perma stunning him. He might go down. Yes, he is. And I think they have the power to. Where did you. Where'd his head go? What the hell? I think they have the power to kill him again if they can get the stuns on. No, Tides of Time not there with the LSA. Kinetic Field is going to hold everyone out. Static Storm as well, and that is going to be huge damage onto Sneaking. Sneaking gets demolished. Howie is trying to do what he can with Blasts. Glimpsing, Fogged back. Is there going to be an Entangle on him? 
The fog does unleash the tornado and the Ravage follow. I'm not sure if that was overlapped. Fear is going to get a lot of spell damage onto him. Darkseer picking up that kill in the universe. Is, uh, Bulba, I'm sorry, running away. He's going to get taken down by the Lesher, uh, Dragon Slave Lesher right on Ix Mike, and that's another kill going the way of TB, doing pretty well in this fight. Universe is running away. Demon managed to survive with the Heart of Tarras, so tanky. But PB taking a much needed three kills. EG got a little bit too over aggressive there. There was no follow up to the Static Storm despite the fact that a couple people did get caught inside of it. And Nigma is going for like huge amounts of bulk. And just hold on to the Vitality Booster, build up a BKB. Is there anything that to go through? No. Nothing goes through BKB there. It's like in picked up a Medallion of Courage, so that's what the Sage Master was for. Did not occur to me that he would get a Medallion of Courage this late. Uh, usually you want to get a Medallion of Courage earlier because, well, it's a cheaper item, first of all. And also, uh, no, I mean, like, the earlier you get the armor reduction, the earlier you can take down Roshan, but Roshan died regardless, so fair enough. Roshan is going to be up relatively soon. Also, Sadeemon is going to be looking towards that as one of his goals. Maybe picking up some power treads or something also. Get some attack speed, get some stats. Should be very nice, but... But the Heart of Tarask, Vlad's Medallion of Courage. This Lycan throw up is pretty scary. And this is pretty much why teams ban him out. Because PB was... They were very vigilant about shutting down that Tides of... Uh, the uh, Lycanthrope for a little bit, but then they got a little bit complacent, and now look where he is. He's just killing the entire team. Feeding some wolves, so. Wolf delivery, I suppose. Disruptor. Staff of Wizardry, Void Stone. That spells to me Yule's Scepter, although I'm not sure if Disruptor is actually going to go for that. I haven't seen him use that Blink Dagger. In my opinion, not really worth it. I'm not the most seasoned Disruptor player, but. Uh, his spells don't really require all that much positioning to set up. Kinetic Field is a huge range. Glimpse has an even larger range. Static Storm, pretty substantial range as well. So all his ranges are pretty large. Doesn't really need to get up in someone's face. So give me a push from PB. This tower is very low. Tornado gonna fly out. Hit the Sloan Druid. And his bear. And his Dragon Slave as well. But Hug the Blast. Blasting down that tower. Blink in from Bulba. There's initiation. Static Storm onto Bog. They have to take him down before this fight even starts. He is still silenced. He's going to die. Disruptor picking up that kill. Ravage going off from way too sexy. Going to catch Demon. Demon is tanky but not invulnerable. He's going to die as well. And Ix Mike, I don't know why you're walking back and forth through that uh, wall of illusions. It's not what you want to do. Universe is here as well. Looking for a black hole. Going to catch down Owie and way too sexy. The bear is here as well with that Radiance Burst. Instantly gets cancelled, however, by this is the vacuum back. Owie is taking a lot of damage. Going to just. Uh, I can decrepify himself. Why can't I remember the name of that spell? When there's a glimpse back from sneaking into a kinetic field. Bulba is here. Does he have a thunder strike? He's taking a lot of damage from that ion shell, but fear still have very substantial amounts of health. And another five for one sweep going the way of EG. That fight did not go PV's way. Simply because they don't I mean like they have a huge amount of spell damage, but EG just way too tanky. Lycanthrope did take a lot of damage there, but with that heart, I mean that's all, every single point of damage put on Lycan is, some, is the point of damage you could have been putting on Bulba. And that simply didn't work out for them with that Medallion of Courage taking down another Age of the Immortal. Lycan throw up level 16, very, very stacked. Disruptor could pick up his Yule Scepter. Well, there it is. He is going to go for Yule Scepter. Blinking Kinetic Field is, I mean, it only got Invoker. So it still wasn't exactly the best. It was effective because Invoker didn't get a single spell off from that engagement with that Static Storm Silence, but I don't know. I don't know if Blink I'm still on the fence about Blink Dagger. Fear and Demon, the animal buddies, going to be pushing down the bot lane while the rest of their team try to set up something on the mid lane. Uh, Disruptor can go in level 16, so he's very high Indian's level. And Inventor is here as well. Owie is going to be the target of choice. There goes Cyclone into a kinetic field, into a Static Storm. Owie actually going to force staff himself. Even further in, gonna try to teleport away. Is there anything to cancel? It? Yes, the Glimpse is gonna pull Owie back. In the meantime, Invoke, uh, Invoker dies to the Enigma Demon on the run. One more hit, 13 HP. Tides of Time does not get that kill. Instead, Enigma picks up a dark kill, kill on the darks here. And what the hell? Oh, yeah, that was really freaking weird. Uh, Spirit Bear is gonna take down, however. Spear does not have that for another 20 seconds. Aegis is going to pop on Demon. Going to go for way too sexy. He doesn't have a Ravage, so he's not going to be able to save himself. Triple kill for the Enigma, actually. Sneaking agrees. 
he picked up the Enigma. Where was that? Doesn't even matter because there's the GG call. PB once again getting cleaned up by EG. EG is gonna go 2-0 in this best of five. The first set we saw PB go 3-0 versus AL. Could we possibly be seeing a 3-0 reverse going the way of EG? I have no idea. Oh no, Cyclone, Kinetic Field, Fog, you're gonna force that out and you're gonna just find- Oh no, Glimpse back in, Fog, joke's on you, he does still have a little bit of fountain regeneration on himself and now Demon, and look for sneaking, instantly entangled on the first hit, back you're gonna slow him down, actually bringing more people towards him, Ravage you're gonna go off and sneaking is alive, you're wrong, sneaking, Tidehunter's gonna be the one who's dead, dude, the Tidehunter, Pipe popping off, but the game's already over. One Rax is down, and everyone from PB is already gone. So this Disruptor, really, the name of the game, 10 to 10, only 57 free kills, but doing so much magical damage to the enemy team and just disrupting them. That glimpse is such a pain in the ass. Now with Static Storm, storming down on Sneaking, you're so dead. And uh, Lycan is gonna just fight his own illusions, I suppose. Troll your way through. But the Disruptor was such a great play by Bulba, such a good pickup by EG. And is he riding a Raptor? I'm pretty sure that is a Velociraptor. He doesn't have arms, so it's not. It looks like a very off-balance creature. I don't know if I would want to ride that. Looks kind of dangerous. He also looks like he gets jostled a whole lot. Not necessarily the wolf that's dependable, like Thrall's wolf in uh, Dota 1, where... The hero model was Thrall. He was even named Thrall. Looks like there's gonna be a black hole into a no static storm actually. But it doesn't matter because Kinetic Field is there to hold out sneaking one more time. And more kills, EG just farming them at this point. Bulba blinking in, trying to go on fog, it's not gonna happen though. So uh yeah. EG takes another game. Lane somehow worked out, despite the fact that I did not expect them to be the way they were. Uh, in my opinion, PB's largest error was picking up that pug. It offered, like, so little to their team. Especially against this lineup, where the casting is kind of like Oh! Casting is kind of light, not the most important... Uh, that, that another word. They picked up something a little bit more typical, if they somehow got their Morphling then the game would have been completely different. They would have had a chance, but they just got shut down every single time and it didn't go well for them. But we'll see if PB can pull it back in game three, guys. Thanks for watching. GG.